Bar lines of thunderstorms are expected Friday evening when they end and what is all about Alert Day Sunday? I have all the details. Also, fire crews putting out a fire at an historic church steeple in downtown Madison. Could today's storms have played a role here? And later, the world's largest broadfest off to a soggy start. We're live at Willow Island with the very latest. Welcome to News 3 Now at 6. Right now, we are tracking more severe weather in our area today. It is the start of what could be a stormy Memorial Day holiday weekend. This is people are heading out to their holiday destinations for the latest on the radar. Let's check first one forecast and chief meteorologist Alex Harrington. Alex. Good evening, Eric. Good evening, folks. Friday evening. Yes, we're still tracking alert day conditions for wind hail and the possibility of an isolated tornado. There is good news here. I'll get to that right now as we move forward and take a look at Doppler 3000 or radar 3000. The most concentrated areas of showers and storms Edgerton to Janesville down to the south and west near Footville and just north and west of Beloit at this point in time. But more showers and thunderstorms lining up in southwestern Wisconsin. Those will sweep across the rest of southern Wisconsin this evening. But note the widespread nature of these showers and storms. That's actually helping to keep the atmosphere cool. And when you have that cool atmosphere that's helping to keep the shower and thunderstorm activity, at least at this point in time, sub-severe, which is certainly good news. I'd mentioned yesterday, if we have a lot of showers and storms throughout the course of the day, which we have, that may cut down on the evening severe uh, the sub severity of the storms during the evening hours which hopefully will maintain as we carry through the rest of this evening future track though keeping shower and thunderstorm activity consistent stretching from the Dells down to Madison to Monroe over towards Janesville do think the best chance if we do have any stronger storms tonight will be down towards Janesville over towards Jefferson County and Walworth County where they have had an opportunity today to heat up just a little bit now, Eric had mentioned a stormy weekend is ahead. Saturday, not stormy. Picture perfect. Get outside. That's the day to enjoy your outdoor Memorial Day festivities. But Sunday, we're tracking alert day conditions for strong winds and heavy rain. I have more information about Sunday's alert day in a little bit. All right, Alex, and as these storms move through, there are still many people who don't have power from Tuesday night storms. We take a look at the Madison Gas and Electric outage map right now. There are a little more than 2,000 outages that remain in the Madison area. Tuesday storms knocked out power to nearly 50,000 customers. MG&E says at the very latest, customers should have their power back on by the end of tomorrow. Now, with severe storms here, once again, be sure to download our free First Warren Weather and Traffic app available right now in the App Store, in your Apple App Store, and also Google. Google Play. The Madison Fire Department spent more than an hour today putting out a fire inside the steeple of an historic downtown church. Our Maddie Himes has more on how the cleanup efforts are going amid this evening's storms. Yeah, the rain this evening has made cleanup outside the steeple a little more challenging, and the steeple has significant water damage already from the extinguishing this morning. Several eyewitnesses reported that lightning struck the church, resulting in the fire and that first 911 call at 1117. Crews have yet to confirm that the cause was lightning, but when they arrived on scene, they made their way up to the steeple to extinguish the flame at its source. Yeah, there's water in kind of the back third of the church, so... We have disaster relief crews on their way out right now to take care of that. It's a huge relief that it was all isolated to the tower um, and then that crews came out here so quickly. The City of Madison Fire Department confirmed that two people were in the church when the fire started, but both exited safely and without injuries. Father Olson said there were no services planned this weekend, giving them a little bit of extra time to make alternate arrangements. Reporting in downtown Madison, Maddie Heimsch, News 3 Now. A 21-year-old Platteville man and three horses are dead after a single vehicle crash that happened in Platteville early yesterday. The Grand County Sheriff's Office got the call just after 3 a.m. Several large horses had escaped their pasture and three of them were running along Highway 80 near Walnut Road. And that's when the man collided with the three horses. That crash remains under investigation. At the state capitol, Governor Tony Evers honoring fallen soldiers with a new executive order. Flags will be flown at half-staff this Memorial Day across Wisconsin, an act of remembrance for the soldiers who died during war, as well as the families of those soldiers. The executive order will be in effect from sunrise to noon on Monday. And with Memorial Day just three days away, politicians are taking the time to show how their work is benefiting veterans. Wisconsin U.S. Senator Tammy Baldwin sat down today with multiple veterans, survivors, and advocates harmed by toxic exposure in the military. They discussed the health care given out by a 2022 law called the PACT Act, which Senator Baldwin helped pass. The big thing at this point is just people, there are many, just thousands and thousands of people that are unaware of benefits. And so 
you know, I've been here 18 years, and I know that uh, every day I, we encounter people that are that are finding out about these things for the first time. Well, if you feel you qualify for benefits under the PACT Act, you can contact your county's Veterans Services Office to learn more about how you can apply. With holiday travel underway, several lanes closed to construction are actually opening up just for the weekend. In the Madison region, one project will pause work while two others will see additional lanes open through Monday. Columbia County, all lanes are open on I-39-9094 at the Wisconsin 60 interchange near Lodi. In Monroe County, two lanes remain open in both directions on I-9094 near Toma. And in Sauk County, I-9094 is open to two lanes in each direction between Wisconsin Dells and Portage. Well, the world's largest brat fest is getting off to a very rainy start due to the weather. Those attending haven't really had a chance to relish the festivities. So let's now catch up with News 3 Now's Braden Ross, who mustered up the courage to go live at Willow Island. Braden, many are hoping the worst of the weather ends sooner rather than later. Braden. Yeah, to be frank, Eric, I can do puns too. Um, it hasn't been a tough day out here for Bratfest, so it's been raining on and off. Look at all these grills here that normally would be fired up. They're all not, but I have some cautiously optimistic good news. You can see behind me, some of them are firing up these grills again. So we're hopeful that maybe we'll, we don't have anything fish official to report yet, but we're hopeful that maybe this closure will end soon. So this is going on about four hours now of this being closed. That's over after another closure this morning. Now the National Weather Service is actually on site here at Bratfest and they've been consulting with them to figure out when they are or are not going to open, what's going on. Um, lightning in the area was the main reason. There are going to be open rain or shine, so rain's not the problem, but lightning is the issue. They can't have people out here when there's lightning strikes too close. So again, cautiously optimistic. We do see these grills starting to light up. We don't have an official announcement yet, but we're hopeful that we'll still be able to be out here and see the village people. That's the most exciting part tonight. Um, obviously get some brats too and beer. These grills have been off for too long today, so I'm glad to see them get back up and running. So we'll keep you updated as we learn more. Their Facebook page is going to be the best place to find out when those updates come in um, and when they're going to reopen. And if not tonight, certainly tomorrow is going to be a beautiful day to come out here. So I'll be out here tomorrow. I'm very excited um, and you should all come out as well. But for now, reporting live at Bratfest, Braden Ross, News 3 Now. Hopefully we can sell a lot of brats tomorrow, and I know you're looking forward to the village people, one of your favorites. Braden, thank you. Coming up on News 3 Now at 6, looking into the dangers of popular social media trends, plus a group advocating for common sense gun laws, holding an event today, their message to the public when News 3 Now at 6 returns. Watching News 3 Now at 6, brought to you by Gruber Law Offices. I'd love to thank everyone at Gruber for taking time and being patient with me. Thank you. I'm just really, really grateful. I want to say thank you. Thank you. Gruber, thanks. Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. Thank you very much. Nobody wants to put a new roof over their head. It's too expensive. And if they can extend the life of that roof and get five more years or ten more years, it's a no-brainer. What RoofMax does is it helps people in that they don't have to spend that $15,000, $20,000 on a new roof. They can spend pennies on the dollar. The RoofMax product was a small percentage of cost of replacing a roof. This is a great financial decision for us as a community. This famous wood fence from the show Home Improvement had to have boards replaced 13 times in only nine years. Our fences outlast wood three to one and are all backed by our extensive lifetime warranty. This month, save $1,000 on your project. Visit the website or call the number for your new fence today. It all starts with a Chevy truck. Chevy Silverado with the Turbo Max engine and best in class standard torque. And Chevy Silverado HD with up to 14 available camera views. Do more in a Chevy truck. Get yours now. Get 1.9% financing on all 2024 Silverado 1500 pickups. We'll get 57.50 total value on this Silverado when you trade in an eligible vehicle. That's 10% below MSRP. Chevrolet, the number one selling brand in Wisconsin. Ride a chip. Don't worry, my cousin's got a guy. <laughs> Right now, get two-for-one windows and no interest for one year. Hurry, call now. Call 866 for feltco When severe storms threatened our area Tuesday. Winds between 55 to 65 miles per hour. We brought you wall-to-wall -wall team coverage with the information you needed to be prepared and stay safe. Get to the lowest, most interior portion of your home. News 3 Now, first worn weather. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. 
A nonprofit fighting to protect people from gun violence is getting support from some local politicians. The Moms Demand Action Group advocates for red flag laws and education to prevent gun violence. While the discussion over guns has been polarizing in this country, Moms Demand Action says they do not want to get rid of guns. In fact, many of the members are gun owners themselves. This is about making sure that they're used responsibly. So you have people who are moms like me. I have, you know, a kid in middle school and a kid in high school. Um, I'm concerned about their safety at school, but I also don't want them to have this learned helplessness of, well, this is just the way it is. It's simply just making sure that we are paying attention and getting educated. At the event, speakers discuss personal experiences and stories highlighting the importance of preventing gun violence. Currently, Wisconsin law allows private gun sales without background checks. Every day, billions of people around the world log on to social media. It connects us, it keeps us up to date on things. But there is a dark side to social media that leads to dangerous trends that have cost lives. New York's Metro Transit Authority says between 2018 and 2023, at least 10 suspected subway surfers were killed. Meanwhile, in 2021, a nine-year-old girl from Milwaukee died after taking part in something called the Blackout Challenge. And while not every trend is deadly, some do encourage risky behavior. Because of social media and how fast this information can get around, it's just the younger people are so much more susceptible to it. Representatives from TikTok and Meta both shared they have community guidelines that prohibit any kind of dangerous activity that could harm users. They're making an effort to take down videos encouraging harmful behavior and will redirect users to resources if they're searching for unsafe material. They also want your help. If you see something that's questionable or dangerous, they want it to be reported so it gets their attention. Does pasteurization work against bird flu in cow milk? Still ahead, the new research that scientists are looking into. Plus, a long lost World War II plane is finally found in the Pacific jungle. We'll tell you about its ties to Wisconsin. And what's the rest of the holiday weekend looking like weather-wise? Alex with his complete forecast when we come back. Save big. During our Made in the USA sale. Featuring Hardwood Amish products and lifetime cushion warranty sofas. Manufactured locally in the USA. Bring quality home at Wanakee Furniture ETC. Thank you for 29 quick and painless years. Wow, fried to the rescue since 1995. And best of Madison's best roofer four years in a row. We know roofs, and your roof gets the very best gutter system with Fry. It's engineered to withstand the toughest conditions and outperform year round. 29 years of excellence and 29% off absolute gutters with any full roofing project. Schedule a free consult now at FryConstruction.com. When a crane collapsed during construction of a major league sports stadium, three workers lost their lives. Their widows called us. When maintenance workers were permanently injured by an industrial accident at a public utilities power plant, the seven injured workers called us. When a factory exploded, injuring dozens of workers, 18 victims, including all three families of men who lost their lives, called us. Because Wisconsinites know who to call when it's a must-win scenario. They call Habish, Habish, and Rotier. National reputation, hometown service. At Machinery Row Bicycles, you'll find bicycle store quality, electric e-bikes from Trek, Electra, Felt, Giant, and more. Trek offers the best-selling e-bike in America, Trek Verve Plus, under $2,500. At Machinery Row Bicycles, you'll find fat e-bikes, mountain e-bikes, road e-bikes, bike path e-bikes, and more. Free services included. The place to shop for your new e-bike is Machinery Row Bicycles, the most beautiful bicycle store in the world. Ruggability. We straight made that word up. How else to describe the otherwise indescribable, rugged, capable, incredible versatility and affordability of a Honda SUV? Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com calls Honda the best value brand. Car and Driver calls Honda the winningest brand in 10 best history. But we like Ruggability. And you'll like the Incredifantabulous deals. So see your Wisconsin Heartland Honda dealer today. Honda gets Wisconsin. Save big. During our Made in the USA sale. Featuring Hardwood Amish products. And lifetime cushion warranty sofas. Manufactured locally in the USA. Bring quality home at Wanakee Furniture ETC. You're watching News 3 Now at 6.
Amazon is trying to get you to add a little more to your shopping carts. Today, the retailer said it's cutting prices on 4,000 grocery items. U.S. shoppers will reportedly see daily discounts of up to 30% on items in store and online. The markdowns will rotate weekly. Meat, seafood, frozen food, dairy and beverages are among the products that will see price cuts. The discounts apply to both national brands and Amazon's private label products. New lab experiments have found milk from cows infected with bird flu can be detected, raising questions about pasteurization. The research looked at milk from four infected cows. Over five weeks, the raw milk stored at refrigerator temperatures had less of the virus in it, but it was still there. Heating the milk at high temperatures for a short time, known as flash pasteurization, reduced the levels, but it didn't inactivate the virus completely. Flash pasteurization is the most common method used in the U.S., but commercial processes add a preheating step that was not part of this study. Now, researchers say that would make it harder for the virus to survive. The CDC says the risk of bird flu to the general public remains low. Many World War II historians regard Richard Bong as America's top ace in World War II. The fighter pilot who grew up in Poplar, Wisconsin, up north in Douglas County, is credited with shooting down 40 Japanese planes during the war. But what happened to his plane has remained a mystery now for decades, that is, until now. John Lauritsen shows us how the big mystery has been solved. This has been a long, long saga, shall we say, for many of us along the route. Richard I. Bong was known as an ace pilot during World War II. He loved planes and he loved his girlfriend, Marge. So much so that he painted her face on his P-38. But 80 years ago, the plane crashed into the jungles of Papua New Guinea. From that point forward, its existence pretty much remained a mystery. Lieutenant Thomas Malone was the pilot that day. He bailed out and survived. And from then on, there was a mission to find March. A few months ago, the Bong Center reached out to Pacific Rex, a group that works to solve World War II mysteries. This has uh, been an incredible journey, incredible expedition. Zooming from Medang province, Justin Talen talked about working with locals and hiking through jungles before they finally caught a break. When we located the crash site, it was an amazing experience. The plane was found in a jungle ravine. It hit the ground so hard that most of its engines were buried in the dirt. But they saw red paint, which is a color on the P-38 Marge plane. And as they dug further, they finally found the serial number, leaving no doubt it was Bong's plane. And it's very common in the Army Air Force in World War II that planes would be abbreviated with the last three digits of the serial number. The emotion that I felt was not just my own joy, but imagining what this means for the Bong family. In the audience for the Zoom press conference was Richard Bong's 99-year-old sister, Jerry. While it's mission accomplished for the expedition, she would love to bring a part of March home. It's great to know it's been found. We saw the pictures of it, so we know it's the right one. It's great to know that it's been discovered. And that was John Lauritsen reporting. Bong died during a test flight back here in the United States when he was just 24 years old. More strong storms moving through the area. Alex now with a complete look at our forecast. Yeah, Eric, a few more hours left of alert day conditions expected across southern Wisconsin for wind. The hail threat is very, very low, and the tornado threat is, uh, is decreasing as well. I'll explain here why in just a moment, but nonetheless, still could still see a couple of isolated severe storms across southern Wisconsin this evening. Let's take a look, quick look here at Radar 3000. Just take a moment to load here where we'll be tracking this line of showers and thunderstorms. It's still widespread across the area from Janesville down to Beloit right now. Some of the stronger activity is actually approaching Beloit as we speak right now. All these white flashes you see here, that's lightning. So vivid lightning with this line of thunderstorms not severe at the Nash, uh, according to the National Weather Service right now, although we'll be keeping our eyes in, uh, on this particular cell. It's the strongest right now across all of southern Wisconsin. Another line of showers and thunderstorms developing from Platteville to Dodgeville west of 151 up into the southern portion of Sauk County and a little bit further to the north widespread showers with a couple claps of thunder now exiting Juneau and Adams counties but still over Marquette and Green Lake counties. What I want to mention here is that the widespread nature of all of the shower and storms are keeping the temperatures down. When you have the temperatures and the temperatures down and it's cooler you don't have that heat that uh, that 
uh, energy you really need to sustain strong thunderstorms. So I mentioned that yesterday as a possible scenario for this evening, and that right now is verifying that the strength of these thunderstorms are generally staying sub-severe. Still strong storms, though, this evening with gusty winds, 40, 45 miles per hour, perhaps again, the very tiny chance of a brief tornado spin-up, but those threats are decreasing here, as noted here. Rainfall, yes, we could see some heavy rainfall from this, but we're not expect expecting widespread flooding. The wind threat right now is the highest hail, slight, and then I've just dropped the tornado threat down because its atmosphere is really tapped. It's cooled down here. So I think the threat for tornado spin-ups, again, brief for this evening. Now this weekend here, the pick of the two is absolutely absolutely going to be Saturday. I know my desk here is in front of Sunday, so I'll actually just move forward to my next graphic here. Sunday, we're going for another alert day. You're probably thinking, another one, Alex? Yes, we could be looking at a strong, complex, and cluster of storms coming out of the central plains where they have a moderate risk of severe weather for Saturday and the remnants of that is going to race into southern Wisconsin as we go Sunday morning into Sunday afternoon. Strong winds and heavy rain are likely going to be associated with that complex of storms as it comes out of the central plains through Iowa and into southern Wisconsin. Very similar to what we saw this morning, that complex of storms rolling through southern Wisconsin. The risk of heavy rain is high. The risk of wind, excuse me, is moderate and the risk of wind is also also moderate. The hail and tornado threats appear to be lower with this bout of thunderstorms, but it looks widespread on Sunday. Here's future track showing that by 9 a.m. that line of thunderstorms, the leading edge of that complex moving from Viroqua to Boscobel to Mineral Point and that sweeps rapidly towards the north and towards the east across all of southern Wisconsin. We could get a brief break and if we get that break, similar to what I mentioned yesterday about today and we are allowed to heat up a little bit, we could see one or two more strong storms pop up as well on Sunday that could reach severe levels with that whole system exiting by the time we get to Sunday evening. So Sunday, generally a washout for the most part. There might be a little bit of dry time on Sunday, but mostly shower and thunderstorm activity prevalent through much of the day as it looks like now. Widespread rainfall amounts from now through the end of Sunday going into Monday, one, two, and wherever that complex of thunderstorms track, tracks we could be looking at two maybe three inches of rain with that uh, with that particular cluster of storms probably wondering what's it going to be like on memorial day monday temperatures cool in the upper 60s there will be some scattered showers and some isolated afternoon thunderstorms but i do anticipate at least a little bit of dry time on monday then we'll stay cool as we go tuesday on into wednesday with temperatures in the upper 60s to right around 70 as we march forward towards the following weekend right now it's looking mild warm with some on and off shower and storm chances. And coming up in sports, the NCAA's landmark settlement that could change college sports forever. We break it down next on News 3 Now at 6. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. How much was I paying a month for insulin? $185. $300. $400. I never expected anyone to do something about it. But then Tammy Baldwin did. She stood up to the drug companies and wrote a law capping the cost of insulin. Thanks to Tammy, now it just costs $35 a month. She made a huge difference for so many of us. She lifted a weight off all our shoulders. I'm Tammy Baldwin and I approve this message. This is me and this was my stubborn body fat. My name's Adrian and Sonobello changed my life. Sonobello is America's number one cosmetic surgery specialist, and they permanently removed my body fat in just one visit. After having two kids, my body, it changed a lot. I tried everything to lose the fat, but nothing seemed to work. Sonobello's board-certified surgeons use micro-laser technology to safely target and remove your diet-resistant fat cells permanently on your stomach, back, chin, and more. I've seen such dramatic results. My tummy is gone, my double chin is gone, and my hourglass shape is back. This was the mommy makeover that I deserved. Schedule your free, no obligation consultation and find out how you can get $250 off instantly. Call 1-888-357-3263 or go to sonobello.com. Salisbury Healthcare is here to help. 
to help with your shoulder pain, your knee injury, that hip that bothers you, with your foot or ankle pain. We focus on quality. We focus on results. And take time to listen. So that your care is the best care. For you. 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 For you. We're here for you. Sauk Prairie Healthcare Orthopedics. Listening, healing, caring. It's in our nature. Saving money with these hot deals in Menards. All prices after 11% rebate. Colored wood mulch is just $1.97. These Dawson retaining wall blocks are only 99 cents each. 10-inch hanging baskets are just $6.99. And this colonial casing is only $1.99. These hot deals won't last long. Hurry in before time runs out. Sign up for Menards emails to get more hot deals. Plus the weekly flyer right to your inbox. No matter where you are, it just feels like we can't avoid the bad weather this week. Whether you're in Madison or you're in Michigan, like Steve Stricker is for the Senior PGA Championship. They're going to try to play through rain or shine. Stricker shot five under yesterday, but bogeyed two of his first three today. Looking to rebound with his second shot on a par 4 14th. It didn't look great right away, but watch this thing roll. Stricker knew exactly where it was going. It would set up a birdie chance for him, which he would continue. Stricker battled some delays today, as did everybody, but last we checked, he shot four under through 12 holes. Elsewhere on the links, Wisconsin's Cameron Huss competing in the NCAA Golf Championship. He is the first Badger to qualify for the event since 2008. Not a bad start for Huss, though. Last we checked, he is one over through seven. A landmark settlement yesterday cleared the path for college athletes to be directly paid by their schools for the first time ever. Settling three antitrust lawsuits, the NCAA agreed to pay $2.7 billion in lost wages to around 25,000 Division I athletes dating back to 2016, who they say could not take advantage of the modern NIL rules. But that's not even the big kicker. The NCAA and the five major conferences also created a revenue sharing program that would allow schools to take around $20 million off their top line and pay their players with it. The settlement still needs the judge's approval and faces other legal hurdles, but is a massive step towards taking the last ounce of amateurism out of the NCAA. Whitewater hosting lacrosse in a D3 baseball super regional. The winner of the best of three series advancing to the College World Series, but the Warhawks fell in game one. We'll have full coverage of their games tomorrow. They'll need to win both of them to stay alive. And we will finish here. You may know that in some major league ballparks, relief pitchers, they have the option to take a cart from the bullpen to the field. Yesterday, this Twins pitcher at a Nationals game decided he'd take the ride, pull the dollar out of his pocket, and tip the driver. I would say that's the last straw for tip culture, but quite the entrance to the stadium. Meanwhile, for the Brewers, they were the first team in the NL to ever have a cart, but it doesn't look like they're going to need it too much tonight. Bryce Wilson on the mound against the Red Sox. He has been lights out lately. All right, we'll see. We'll see. Some good trivia there. <laughs> uh, this weather is really messing things up tonight. It is for Bratfest. Unfortunately, we got another line of thunderstorms to the west that will sweep through the rest of the area. This should end by the time we get to 10, 11 o'clock at night, and that will move out into the Lake Michigan area. This line of thunderstorms is not the only line of storms we're going to see this weekend. Severe weather threat this evening, mainly wind, and then as we head towards Sunday, that's another day of alert day with strong winds and heavy rain. And from the, the Broadfest website, they have canceled the events for the evening due to that weather. We'll have more updates tonight at 10.